don't know how you feel at the moment, Jeff, but I feel like I'm back in Honduras and it's 180 degrees. <laughs> I heated up a while ago and I've never cooled back down. So uh, I wanted to play them two songs for a particular reason tonight, Jeff. And the first one is to help you to remember that we are sinners saved by grace. And that's where God's mercy is more than our sin. He's able to forgive us of all of our sin. And I want to remind you that just because you step into a pulpit does not mean that you are perfect. I know a lot of people want a pastor that is absolutely perfect. And, and I can tell you there are three pastors, four pastors in this building right now, not counting you, that are not perfect. We, we still fall short of what God wants us to be. So we need God's mercy to endure. And then the second song was, Lord, I need you. And that's to signify that you will never be able to stand in this pulpit without God or any pulpit. We must have the Lord leading us in all things. And that goes for all of us. That's not just for ministers. But uh, to get started tonight, Jeff, you heard the call to the ministry and you have sought to fulfill that calling. Uh, you talked to me about it, uh, I want to say, pretty close to a year ago, I think, is when we discussed it. So I, I got with you and I said, we'll set aside some times uh, where you could show uh, our congregation that you had uh, heard the call from God and, and show evidence of that proof. Uh, I didn't need it for myself because I've seen you minister for quite some time. But ministry is more than just preaching the Word of God. Now this license will give you the ability to uh, stand up and to perform the, the functions of a minister. You'll be able to do some legal things that you, you couldn't before. But the truth of the matter is that I have seen you uh, perform ministry for a great many years. And back to uh, the very beginning of when I saw it, Eddie, was around uh, 1998. I think you began talking to me about the Lord. Uh, and you, uh, you saw my life over that from 98 to 99. You saw my life slowly unraveling. And you stepped in with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and, and gave me a lifeline. You gave me the only lifeline that could save me, and that was Jesus. Uh, you gave me more than I can ever give you in return. And I just want you to know how much I appreciate. And I'm sure these, these folks around here appreciate that gift that you've given me because I, in turn, am using that, uh, that gift to minister to them as well. So uh, I'm sure everybody's thankful to you for taking the time to share the gospel with me. Uh, and that, that gospel that you shared with me began growing in 1999, and it's still growing today. And, and uh, the, it's grown because of the spirit that lives within me. And I know the spirit lives in you, so I know that that's going to continue to grow in you. Now, for me, I've been fortunate to have a great number of the finest godly men uh, around me. Two of them are, are sitting right back there that were able to teach me how to minister, uh, teach me how to pastor, teach me how to love on people. And, and they uh, had helped me to grow ever since Rock Haven licensed me back in 2004. And then I had 12 years of that growth uh, of working with, with these two guys back here. And they, they taught me everything I needed to know. Well, not everything. <laughs> All three of us are still learning. Right, brothers? Okay. So anyway, I had 12 years of learning before this church was brave enough to call me as their pastor uh, in 2016. Now, this license that I'm going to present to you tonight is just the next step in that process. Uh, and so, uh, you'll, you'll be continuing on in that process. And I personally have seen you search through the scriptures to find the answers uh, to, the, to the tough biblical questions. And you even schooled me, if you remember, uh, before we went to Honduras, you, you threw something at me and... and I wasn't knowledgeable enough to understand where you were going, but at the end of it, I said, thank you for the lesson, did I not? <clears throat> so you're still teaching me, uh, even though I'm the one that's here helping you into the ministry. But uh, 
uh, you've searched the scriptures and, and you know what they say, but I want to share some scriptures with you tonight. 1 Peter 5, 1 through 4 says, The elders who are among you, I exhort. I, who am a fellow, fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed, shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, but not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Now, Peter gives us that mission as ministers of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are to pursue this calling because, uh, first of all, God has called us to it. Uh, and that's, that's the main thing. If God hasn't called us to it, then, then we're, uh, we're going in error. But God has called us to this ministry, first of all. And then the second thing is that we cared enough about the people to share the truth that is contained in these scriptures. And, and like I said, you started doing that in 1998 with me. You took the truth of the scriptures and you showed me that I was a sinner and that I needed a savior. And that's one of the things that a minister is to do. Now, these, this uh, truth that you're revealing and, and you standing up in a pulpit, proclaiming it as a minister, it does not mean that you are better than anybody else. It just means that you are to lead by example. Uh, you're not perfect, but we need, to, we need to strive for that perfection so that what we're preaching, the people can see it living in us. So we want to make sure that, that we... <clears throat> Uh, can't preach one thing and live another. So we want to make sure we're preaching the gospel and living it as well. In Ephesians chapter 4, 11 through 16, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saint for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotty, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So we speak the truth in love. We speak the truth because we love people. And I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like to hear the truth and they think that we don't love them. But I can tell you I love people greater because I have the truth living in me and I want them to know the truth. I want them to live with me forever in heaven, so I'm going to tell them the truth. And I pray that you got that same spirit in you that speaks boldly the truth of God into people's life so that they know uh, that they need the Lord. Now, uh, you'll learn during your time as a licensed minister by watching other preachers and how they approach the word in love uh, and not in hateful speech. Now, there's a big difference in that, and I hope you recognize that. Because I know there's a lot of preachers that are out there, and what they preach is, is absolute hate, that God hates people. God does not hate people. God loves people, mm -hmm. and he wants us to show them that love. So I pray that, that you go that route and don't take the route of, of trying to shame somebody into finding Christ. And I think you did it perfectly when you ministered to me back in 98, 99. You shared it in love. And I never felt that you you hated anything about me, that you loved me. And I appreciate that about you. So I know that you're uh, that God's got you in his hands and he's going to lead you. And then Paul reminds Timothy what his purpose is in leading the people in the word in 2 Timothy 4, 5. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. So if God has called you to the ministry... He will help you to fulfill your purpose. Uh, but it's going to take a strong faith on your part. Uh, a strong, strong faith on your part to stand and, and deliver uh, the message that needs to be preached every single time. 
you cannot step into this pulpit with a weak faith. You have to have a strong faith, and you have to be able to endure whatever the devil throws at you. So I know that that, uh, that God will help you in that uh, aspect of the ministry. And I can tell you from being a minister for quite a while, and I'm, I'm sure these other guys can tell you that uh, when we stand and we preach, the devil doesn't like it because we're proclaiming the truth. And when he doesn't like it, he gets mad at you and he's going to throw some things at you and you've got to be able to endure it. So stand strong, brother, uh, because the purpose of what we're preaching is to save uh, the souls that the devil is fighting to steal from us. So we want to make sure that we're doing that in love. And then Paul also reminds us of that fact in Philippians 1, 6, being confident, confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will com complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So Jesus will be your strength, and he will see you through every single thing that you're going to face in life. And I've always heard uh, from several ministers that uh, Mondays are the hardest day that a minister has to face because that's a day that he sits down and he begins uh, listening to God and what am I going to do, what direction you want me to go in, and the devil's laying heavy on you, the weight of the world's coming against you. And, and if you ever pastor a church, I can tell you Mondays are the day that you think about signing that letter of resignation and submitting it on Tuesday morning because uh, it, it, is, it is a tough day. Uh, Sunday's a great day. You're in here worshiping the Lord. But Monday, when you sit down and you start thinking about things again, that's when, that's when it's difficult, brother. So be sure that you stand strong in your faith. Uh, and understand that uh, it is God that is your strength. Uh, I, I can tell you from experience that I don't stand in this pulpit on any power of my own. I stand in the pulpit because of Jesus Christ that dwells within me. And it's by His power and for His glory that I can stand up here. And I expect you to do the same. And I expect you to reach the world with the gospel. Uh, 2 Timothy 1, 6, 7 says, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So you need to preach the word boldly in power and without fear. Yet you always preach it in love. And, and I can't overstress that enough. We have to preach in love because that's what God wants us to do. And, uh, and I can tell you I've learned from experience that, that there is a better way and it's through God's love. And it's not through uh, condemnation and hate. Uh, yes, we must call sin out. We must call sin what it is. But we need to do it. We need to be careful to do it in love so that they understand why we're calling out sin. It's because we love them. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 1 through 6. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled for those who are perishing whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So, brother, you need to hold true to what God's Word uh, is doing in your life. And you need to renounce any sin that might try to creep up and destroy your ministry. Uh, you don't want the devil to destroy your witness. So, remember that what you're preaching is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And, and that's what you're preaching. That's it. So, uh, don't ever allow the devil to get you to puff yourself up to think you're somebody because uh, I don't know if you heard the song I'm a nobody trying to tell everybody about the somebody that saved my soul Amen. and brother I guarantee you that's the route that you need to go 
And you got to, finally, you need to remember what you've been commissioned to do. Uh, and, and that's the, the, I think everybody knows that, Matthew 28, 18, and 19. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So by Augustine Baptist Church licensing you into the ministry, we are supporting you to go out and to lead people to the Lord, the only Lord that can save them in Jesus. And you do that with your preaching, with your teaching, with uh, the lifestyle that you lead, with, with all these things. You lead people to Jesus. And you want to make sure that your conduct is above reproach. Because uh, they can they can hear all that you're saying. You know, if a preacher is up here and we're saying the most beautiful, wonderful things, but we're not living, then everything that we've said becomes null and void. So you want to make sure that your conduct is right before everybody. That means when you go to the grocery store, you don't act a fool when they mess up uh, something. When you go to a restaurant and they mess up your order, you don't slam down your food on the table and say, you messed up my order, you, you goofballs. <laughs> You do everything in love and respect. And you got to make sure that people are seeing the Lord living in you. And I can tell you that you're never going to make disciples trying to do it any other way than the way that it is commanded in the scriptures for us to do. Uh, now, I just realized that in the middle of my message for you that I forgot a very important part. So, Mark, I'm going to ask you if you would run downstairs and get me a chair uh, real quick, one of them white chairs and bring it back up here because I forgot all about that important piece of furniture. Uh, you kind of need those things for some reason. <sighs> so brother, I'm going to have you come up here. That'd be you. Hey, ain't nobody else getting licensed but you, so it's got to be you. Yes. Thank you, sir. All right. I'm going to have you sit right there. Brother, this is, this is very important. I want you to know I love you. And like I said, there's nothing I can give you that will ever repay what you gave me. There's nothing in this world. You cannot give anything greater than leaving somebody to salvation in Christ. And I love you for that. And I can't ever thank you enough. But what I'm going to do for you right now is I'm going to teach you how to serve people. So if I can have you take off your shoes and socks. I might slap you. <laughs> you just never know, buddy. I love you too much to do that. <clears throat> and don't worry if they're dirty and stinky. That's what this is about, bud. See, when Jesus bowed down to wash his disciples' feet, he was demonstrating just how much he loved them, how much they meant to him, and what it meant to serve somebody. Doing the humble work of a servant. You see, that's what God has called us to in this ministry. doesn't 
called us to do the wonderful, glorified things he calls us to do this step one. Acts of love and kindness to another person. What he demands of us is to be more like him. To love more. To love greater. shoulder of the person that's touching Jeff if you can't get to him. to take that path when it is presented to him. Father, I pray that you enable him to speak boldly the name of Jesus before all the world so that they may know that he is the only way to salvation. Father, I pray that you give him a heart of love and a heart of mercy to be able to forgive others when they do egregious wrongs to us, Father. I pray that you can comfort him you can help guide him in the days ahead that he may truly know that the spirit of the Lord lives in him and that when he speaks it's the Lord God Almighty that speaks for him and not that a man can speak anything without the spirit of God being present in his heart so father I thank you for my brother here and I present him to you as a minister of your word father and I pray that you help us all to be more like Jesus that we may glorify and magnify the name of Jesus before all this world. And we ask this blessing upon Jeff in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. 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 Stop. Oh. Cam. Huh? Video.